was just another no-hoper in the back street of Brooklyn. Now, to the kids he shares his spare time with, he's a folk hero, a gentle giant. Will the world ever see the real Tyson floor like this? One, two, three. On his way to the world title, Tyson showed Trevor Burbick he was anything but a gentle giant. Tyson's way. I think Burbick's come in tonight to show how brave and how tough he is. He's done that all right, but uh, that's not enough to hang on to a title. There he goes. Oh. There was a delay with that one. It was a peach of a punch in boxing terms. Completely gone. The legs are buckled under him there. He's really like a kid stumbling in a playpen with 23 seconds to go in the second round. And he's done it. Bone Crusher Smith survived his encounter with Tyson by keeping out of his way until the final round. Smith and he recognised it, and I think Tyson did. And he saved almost in the last 10 seconds his best punch of the fight, I thought, Bone Crusher Smith. Next in the firing line was Pinkland Thomas. Oh, he got the job done there. I think he must have heard you there, Jim. What a peach of a left hook that was. And he's going to do it in the sixth because he's only midway through. And this is the way he finishes him off now, the master of the... The finishing stuff, what a fighter, absolute ferocious, and what a game man. He took every punch in the book there, but what a tremendous finish there by the Iron Man himself. Tyson demolished any remaining doubts when he beat Tucker to become the world's number one. Well, it doesn't look to me as though Mike Tyson's ever broken training the way he's finished this one, Jim. He's as fit as anything. Tucker actually tried to push him back there. He's actually trying to push Tyson back. This is what I wanted to see, someone trying to push him to see if it's possible. It's too late now. And the crowd loved it. There's no handshakes at the end. Mike Tyson has been a professional fighter for just two and a half years, but already he's a legend. He's provided heavyweight boxing with his first undisputed champion for nine years. His statistics alone are awesome enough, but he'll need skill and staying power as well as statistics to tackle challenger and 1984 Olympics champion Tyrrell Biggs in Atlantic City. Biggs looks as though he can help himself. He's got inside a minute to do it, and he's going to do it. A sensational win, surely, for the WBA number one. He looked as though it was definite. He was going to get stopped by injury. What a tremendous victory for Biggs. And you can see Mike Tyson defend his undisputed world heavyweight title against Tyrrell Biggs, live from Atlantic City, exclusively on ITV. Late tonight at 3.15 a.m. Atlantic City and this vast convention center here which is absolutely sold out for Mike Tyson's first defense of the undisputed heavyweight championship of the world. Yes, he's attracted a record crowd. There are 16,000 here to witness the challenge of the number one contender, the unbeaten Tyrell Biggs, winner of gold in the 84 Olympics. Now, Tyson comes to this confrontation still trying to prove to the skeptics that he has the ability to take his place alongside the all-time greats. For Biggs, it's his toughest assignment since waging a battle against drink and drugs. Some people when they would slip wrists where they actually try to take their own life. And uh, I said, well, I never tried anything like that. When psychologically and mentally, that's what I was, you know, that's what I was doing anyway. I was killing myself just, if not worse, than somebody slitting their wrist. And this is, these are the things that I came in touch with. And that's when I made a lot of them. I said, well, I, you know, I can use this. This can, this is what's going to get me back in order. And if I can take this, take these tools that they give you and use them the proper way, I can clean myself up. And so he did and got back to work. But there are questions about his power in the ring. In his 15 fight unbeaten career, he's never met a top contender. Last March in Las Vegas against the unranked journeyman David Bay, he came within an ace of defeat. In round five, he sustained a terrible cut, which almost cost him the fight and a shot at Mike Tyson. He really had to turn on the power to survive. 
and he's trying to do it now, big. Full mark to him. He knows it's a desperate situation and he's done it, I think, in the sixth round. What a tremendous effort there by Thrill Biggs and he's shaking his head to the corner there. David Bay just doesn't know where those punches have come from. As good as I am, I know that I, I know how good I am. And for me to have been criticized and the whole shot, I mean, you know, I owe it to myself to go out there and beat Michael Tyson. Like, I am his dad. It's, he's made for me. Ty's son. I, I owe it to myself to go out there and beat this fellow and be called the new undisputed heavyweight champion in the world. At six feet five, he'll certainly have a height advantage on the champion. Arguments have raised about how tall Mike Tyson is. He's certainly short for a heavyweight, some say five feet ten inches. But he has been measured at five feet eleven and a half. Tyson's opponents have averaged six feet two and a half inches, and only two have stood less than six feet. It's often said that taller fighters do enjoy a distinct advantage, but in Tyson's view, these fighters have a marked disadvantage. I think you know, it's to my advantage, because most fighters are used to fighting opponents six three, six two, the average um, heavyweight. And I feel that I use it to my advantage because I move my head, I'm very quick, and I'm low to the ground, and it's very difficult to hit me. I crouched low just to make my opponents punch down because I know where they're going to punch it because I'm, I'm down there and I'm looking at them because I'm so low and I come up, I feel it's my advantage because they can't see most of my punches coming. I get a lot of leverage for my punches and it doesn't matter if I punch up or straight or down or around, I have good leverage. His lower body strength provides the leverage to throw powerful punches in an upward movement against taller fighters as depicted here against Jose Ribalta. When I was young, I used to always say, God, I'm just, I'm just a midget. I'm never going to grow. I'm never going to be anything because I'm too short to do any kind of sports, anything. But then, you know I mean? I started believing in myself, and things worked out right. Well, things work out for Tyson here tonight. Well, he is the 12 to 1 on favorite, and we'll see after this brief break. Welcome back to the Trump Plaza Convention Center here in Atlantic City for Mike Tyson's defense of the undisputed heavyweight championship of the world against the number one contender, Tyrell Biggs. With me, of course, is Jim Watt. Jim, do you think that um, Tyrell Biggs has got the ability to even stretch Tyson? Well, Tony Tucker showed us that Tyson can be frustrated by a fast-moving opponent, and that is uh, the kind of style Tyrell Biggs has. If Biggs can get through the first two rounds when we know Tyson's at his most dangerous, then there's a chance he can maybe have some success surviving, but I don't really think he has a serious chance of defeating Tyson. He's enjoying a five-inch uh, height advantage. How much difference would that make, do you think? Well, I don't know that it is an advantage because Tyson has based his style on aggression, keeping close, and we are told that he intends to work to the body a bit more, so I don't think Biggs' height is going to be an advantage. It may be more of a disadvantage. You were talking about, we're looking at uh, Tyrell Biggs in the ring now, and here comes the champion. Kevin Rooney is leading him in. There's the undisputed world heavyweight champion. Unbeaten, as we know. 31 contests, 27 inside the distance. All wins, of course. And do you think we're going to see a, a rather more mature Tyson this time, Jim? Well, Tyson is still learning, we have to remember. He's only 21 years old. He's been frustrated in two out of his last three contests. So I think in the gymnasium, he must be thinking about this. He must be working on technique. His technique still leaves a little bit to be desired. And I, I think we're going to see an improvement every time he goes into the ring, and we'll probably see an improvement tonight. We've been talking to Glen McCrory, of course, he's been working with him in training, our own Glen McCrory, uh, from Tyneside. And he was saying that he'd been doing a lot of work with body punches. Yeah, well, being Tyson is so much smaller than everybody else. I think the one part of his technique that's been left lacking is body punches. He's been known to lunge at opponent's head when he becomes a bit frustrated. I think if he works to the body, his punches will land much more clearly, much easier, and would obviously slow opponents down. If he'd slowed Tony Tucker down with body punches, he may have stopped him, but he, he headhunted far too much in that particular point. It'll be interesting to see whether he gets into that frustration uh, that we've seen him experience, uh, you know, after the first three or four uh, rounds if he's not actually getting there. Well, Tyson keeps the same pace going even when he is frustrated. He doesn't allow his work rate to drop, so there is still always the chance he's going to win by knockout. He's such an exciting fellow. We're looking at Tara Big's record there. It's 15 wins, he's unbeaten, 10 outs uh, inside the distance. But has he beaten the, the, the kind of uh, opponents uh, 
Phillips, you think gives him a chance. He has not faced the quality that Mike Tyson has faced, no. I can't really give Biggs a serious chance of victory. He's a very talented boxer, a very good amateur. He still has retained some amateur faults, but because of his height, if he manages to get a bit of space between himself and Tyson, he can probably survive for a few rounds. I think that's the best we can hope from him. I don't know if you want to make any kind of prediction, Jeff, because you're rather uh, shy of doing so. Well, well, it all depends how soon Tyson gets to Biggs. It also depends the, the tactics Biggs has in mind. If Biggs wants it, he's been saying some arrogant things, but if he squares off to Tyson, he could end up in trouble quickly. Well, Jim, thank you very much indeed. You're going to go down ringside and let me hand over to ringside and our commentator there, Reg Gartridge. Well, there it is then with your ringside seat for this big fight, and it's really buzzing here. And here's the rundown. As you can see, age, age is different and all that kind of thing. And the, the weight difference, this is the lightest that Mike Tyson has been in five title fights. And here's the MC Michael Buffer. Tribute to one of sports and boxing's finest journalists. Would everyone please rise for silence as timekeeper Roosevelt Gilbert tolls the final count of ten for the late Dick Young. This is a tribute to the New York Post columnist Dick Young, of course, one of the veterans of the fight business, and they, they're tolling the 10-second bell. May his soul rest in peace. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. And now, ladies and gentlemen, this is the... And there are the judges, and who knows, they might be a bit superfluous, I would have thought. And the referee, Tony Orlando. Balasuri and Lawrence Wallace. The chairman is Jerry Gormley. Representing the International Boxing Federation is its president, Robert W. Lee. The championship committee chairman is here, Bill Brennan. Representing the World Boxing Association, Dr. Keith Arthur and Dr. Elias Cordova. Here for the World Boxing Council is James J. Binns, Esquire. The three judges doing all the scoring tonight are Al Walensky, John Stewart, and Frank D. Brunette. The timekeeper, Roosevelt Gilbert. Counting for the knockdown seconds, Rudy Battle. Chief ringside physician, Dr. Frank B. Doggett. Also in attendance, Dr. Stanley Edding and Dr. Paul Williams. And now, ladies and gentlemen, let's get ready to rumble from the Trump Plaza Hotel and Casino by way of Convention Hall in Atlantic City, New Jersey. 15 rounds for the undisputed heavyweight championship of the world. A referee for this bout is Tony Orlando. Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner. He's wearing the white trunks and weighs 228 and three quarter pounds. He's from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. This Olympic gold medal champion has 15 consecutive victories, 10 by knockout. Introducing the number one challenger in the world. Fighting out of the red corner, wearing the solid black trunks. He weighs 216 pounds. From Catskill, New York. 27 of his 31 unblemished victories are by knockout. Ladies and gentlemen, the undefeated, undisputed, heavyweight champion of the world. So excitement suitably whipped up then, and uh, this is a point where I think Tyson looks at his man and says, your face or mine. But uh, no problems there anyway. They're waiting for the, the first bell. They don't get paid for overtime in this game. So it's very much the payback fight for Tyson. He boxed two rounds once in the amateurs 
merely in trials with Tyrell Biggs when Biggs went on to the Olympic team and uh, Mike Tyson failed to make it. So now, is it going to be a traditional explosive start? 16 wins in the first round, remember, Mike Tyson. But Biggs is the man with the game plan of the movement, and he certainly has that. He's a very smart boxer, very mobile. 16 stone, four and three quarters. He weighed 16-7 against Lorenzo Boyd in Texas in July, which was a total mismatch, so we're not too worried what he weighed there. And Tyson is lightest in his five title defences at 15 stone six. Still a big boy, isn't he? Whether he's 5'11 or 10'11, it doesn't matter. The punches count. If you're good enough, it doesn't matter if you're small or not. Uh, Marciano and Frazier prove that. So he's got the traditional so-called bad guy black trunks on again, Mike Tyson. That huge body, the uh, foul-proof protector there around his base of his ribs anyway. So I think you've, you've got a little look now at, uh, there's a man at ringside, Muhammad Ali, who would say, well, that's the way that he's got a boxer to follow, but Ali, in fact, predicted Tyson to win. So you wonder, Jim, all those years ago with head guards on in the amateurs when they just messed around for two rounds in Olympic trials, whether he's got the confidence enough, Biggs, even from that. Well, he, he started the only way he should start. Uh, he's trying to get as much space between Tyson and himself as possible. Already has shown that he has the talent to frustrate Tyson, although Tyson hasn't really been throwing too many yet. Here he comes in now. But uh, Tyson hasn't really been as wild as we've seen him in some of his previous first rounds. Well, there's going to be delay here if he doesn't knock uh, Biggs over because that uh, bodyproof protector's already come unbuttoned at the back there, Jim. And you remember we had that with Tony Simpson against Marvin Hagler, which was a bit embarrassing. There it is. Now, no, he's not going to. He's going to let it go to the end of the round. It's uh, it's a shame to do that. Tyson's really firing, isn't he? He's got juiced up for this fight. You know, in many ways, you've got to judge him on championship form, but he's he's still very much an apprentice champion, Tyson. Lacks that experience, 31 fights, of course, but, uh, well, that would be nothing in the old days. You've got an exciting fighter he is, Jim. Uh, he gets just just the clips around the ears enough, isn't it? Yeah, well, that was a good left hook you get through with, but uh, Bix has a good chin, but uh, you can't give Tyson too many free goals. So we're coming up now to the end of the first there with a countdown clock. And they've got to do something about that protector. As you well can see there, look, it's coming uh, well apart there. Well, it's always a relief to hit the end of the first round and a bit of an argument going on as well. So he's having a stand in the corner there, Biggs, while they're adjusting that belt. And you'll probably notice, I'm sure you will, that the referee, Tony Lando, and the seconds are all wearing now obligatory rubber gloves to, uh, they think, combat the AIDS problem in boxing if there's any bloodshed. And some of the commissions are now doing that, including the IBF. corner of course with Biggs, with Dan Do, with George Benton. They've got a stable of champions. Out for the second to repeat schedule to 15 and not 12. And neither of them have been 15 rounds, so who knows if uh, it does go that distance, what sort of turn of events we'll have. The main thing is, of course, that Biggs doesn't have that dreadful scar. Uh, reopen now that he had against David Bay. But it's a tribute really to him as a character that he's able to get back into the ring with all the troubles that he survived. And certainly the drugs and alcohol problem, rehabilitation clinic. And even in the fight he had a, a broken collarbone and had to win the fight one-handed. It's going to be a 
It's similar to the Tucker fight for Tyson, isn't it? Now he's got to find his way inside there, Jim. It, it looks as though he may catch up with him, but it's, it's getting a bit difficult. I think Tucker stood his ground a little bit more than Biggs has done so far, although it's, it's very early. But Biggs is backing off all the time. But he's actually making a good, a good job of it. He's not overawed. He, his concentration has been good there. That, that's been a feeling in some of Biggs' earlier performances. Lapses of con concentration, but I don't think that will happen tonight. Well, that was Biggs' game plan, wasn't it? He said, if he can't knock me out, he can't outbox me, that's for sure. insisted that they both punch out with two hands and not grab inside as they are there. First uh, championship fight at the heavyweights for this referee. And he's already made his mark. Well, as the punch landed around the rear there, Jim, that'll cut down his speed a bit. Well, Tyson has been throwing a bit more to the body than we're used to seeing. Uh, he, he did tell us that uh, he's been practicing body punches, which is obviously a sensible thing to do when all your opponents are taller than you. But he's getting very close to Biggs already. I thought it would have maybe taken him a few rounds to get this close. But he's getting close already. Now he doesn't creep up on him. He's, he sends the calling card and he comes straight in. Up there. He took that well, Biggs, but not for long. If he repeats that, he's, he may run out of time in this round. And, of course, if he goes down at the end of the round, the referee would continue counting. But there are no three knockdowns in effect for this one. Three. Now, can Tyson repeat that left hook? Or may even produce a right hand uppercut. How do we know this fellow? He's got the armory. Big odds on favourite, of course, in this uh, gambling city of Atlantic City along the famous boardwalk, where, in fact, the first million dollar game took place in this state, New Jersey, Dempsey and Carpentier. Jimmy, he showed that and it still land, didn't it? See, Tyson is showing the feint now. He's getting a little bit of rhythm about his work now. He's showing a feint before he throws any punches. He's making Biggs make his move first. Uh, it looks as though he's solved them out already. He was getting very, very close in the second round. And now he's putting a little bit more thought into his work. something really that 22 out of 31 fights for Tyson didn't go beyond the second round so uh, the third round actually so we're getting some value for money here anyway if, if Biggs can hang in there oh, he's digging those punches into the ribs as well now that's the last thing Biggs wants to do is stand and trade he tried that with David Bay and uh, was then badly cut and there's a cut around uh, Biggs's left eye now. Is that a reopening midway through the third? That'll be sad for him because he doesn't deserve that. He's fighting a brave one. Hold, hold, hold. Anywhere around there, Jim, must be on or near the original cut, mustn't it, as we remember it? Yeah, it looks it looks uh, the exact same place. Biggs is not having any any success pulling his head out of trouble I think he's going to have to try and block the punches rather than pull away from them when he pulls away from the first punch he has nowhere else to go and when Tyson follows on he's taking too many punches he's going to have to try to block some of the punches but as we said earlier uh, I think it's a lost cause so now he can afford just afford to have a little bit of a hunter's patience about him now, Tyson. He's, he's started to realise he needs a bit of technique. He's, he's bitten the little bits of criticism that were aimed at him because two of his last three fights went to the full distance.
I don't think we give Tyson the full credit for the jab he has. He's oh, good, good left hook. No, he, is, he, he opens him up a little bit with that, doesn't he? And that left hook's an absolute right, peach of a punch. punch. And he has surprising hand speed for such a compact fellow, Jim. Well, the punches are short, then he moves in with them. Well, now that corner's really got to work quickly on that. Ace Marotta is the Duva Camp uh, cut man. As I say, they're the, they're the white gloves they're all wearing. And the doctor from New Jersey Commission is in there. He's allowed to get in at any time, and uh, he, he will advise the referee. In fact, his word will count according to the rules meeting. There's no disputing that. And that was the, the previous cut that you saw there. And there they are working on what we presume is a reopening. Now, the doctor's also having a chat with the referee here at the end of the third, but he's leaving the ring. Jim, let's uh, just get a look at that there, you see. He can, he can throw them there and misses with that one. Not one of uh, Tyson's better attackers, but that was a point that you could see the cut around the eye close. It's all downhill battle, surely, for Taro Biggs. It was hard to gain strength in a fight when you're bleeding and trying to wipe the glove away against a man of this strength that comes at you with such will. He looks, he looks in a little bit better shape. I know he was lighter, Jim Tyson, than he did against Tony Tucker. Do you think that's made a bit of difference with his speed? It's possible because he is looking very sharp. I was surprised how soon he got there, so close to Biggs. But, but poor Biggs, how, how do you prepare for a man like Tyson? No sparring partner even comes close to, to this machine in front of you. It's impossible to, to prepare for this kind of fight. I think even Biggs must be surprised at the strength and power Tyson has. Well, Tyson employed uh, Glenn McCrory from Durham to try and do his uh, hit-and-run stuff in the gym, and apparently he survived it pretty well. Now, it's got to be long range or nothing now with Biggs. And a good left hook, he turned into an uppercut. Tyson has dropped the pace. He just seems to be looking for one big left hook now. I think he feels that one clean shot will finish this job. Now, is he going to try and do this as he did with David Bay? Pull the fight right out of the fire, turn it around. It's, I would have thought that was not possible to stop Tyson like that. Well, whatever big money in terms of millions of dollars that uh, they're drawing for this fight, Jim, it's, it's worth it where Biggs is concerned now. He, he really is in a rough ride, isn't he? Yeah, and he really is putting up a show. Nothing is really going his way. I think the cut was just the, the final insult. See, Tyson hasn't thrown as many punches in this round. He seems to be setting himself for the big one, especially the left hook. That's given him a lot of success up till now. He looks as though he wants to, wants to finish it with one punch. He walks straight in on a, a straight track there, doesn't he, Tyson? He really hounds his man all the time. again the right hand came with that as well that was a, a two punch combination for a change and he really is a tremendously fast puncher as we saw when he finished Pinkland Thomas coming out for the fifth and they're doing a, a good job there in Big's corner and they'll need to because it's more than running repairs he needs at the moment. Well, Tyson's got this what seems an obsessive commitment when he's got a man on the hook like this. And having been an expert that's watched all those old time films many, many hours, he really knows, uh, learned a lot from those guys. He's, he doesn't ever want to be compared with them, he says, until he's proved himself in a few years' time. Imagine how good he can be. 
They've staunched the eye reasonably well, Jim, haven't they? You've had that problem, obviously. Yeah, they've done a good job because that is a bad cut. Biggs looked heartbroken as he went back to his corner at the end of the fourth round. I thought maybe his heart was leaving the job, but he's come back again and uh, he's trying to get himself, get, getting punches off and trying to get himself back into it. But Tyson has lost his rhythm. He seems to be setting with a one punch. He's, he's not using the, the same rhythm he was earlier on in the contest. I think even his corner were saying to him, don't throw one punch, uh, get them out fours and fives. Really trying to get every inch he can with that left hand jab to keep him off. But it's the old uh, pea shooter and the tank stuff, isn't it? Biggs leaves his chin so unprotected at times. He still has some of these amateur habits. He's too tall to do that against an opponent, especially like Tyson. But he seems to be hanging his head up there far too often. He has a good chin already, been knocked out long ago. He's knocked out by the Cuban Teofilio Stevenson back in 82. That's the, the only stoppage on his career, on his career record as amateur and pro. Tyson hasn't lost the decision to Henry Tillman in an Olympic box off in uh, 84. But three rounds, of course, are never enough for this little fella. Imagine calling him a little fella the way he fights. Yeah, that's, Jim, that, that's, that really is not going to last that. It's, it's unzipped like a purse there, didn't it, as he threw that right yeah. hand. I think there's blood coming from his mouth as well now, isn't it? Yeah, I, think, state. I think this is going to be the last round. He's looking at the corner as well, as if to say, what do I do now? All the heart in the world, Terrell Biggs, but as you say, from the Bay fight, he knows now that there's no way he can switch this round and stop this tank coming at him. Oh, referee getting himself tangled up there. And the crowd not liking that uh, with Tyson. He once did that at an, in the amateurs with an African who wouldn't fight him, so he got out of the ring, Tyson, and got disqualified. Well, he stalled a bit there. They didn't put any extra time on the round there. That surprised me. It took a long time sitting down there now, Jim. I would have thought that the doctor would be back up there again, and it, it really did look bad to us towards the end of that round. This guy can't punch, can't do nothing out there. Well, they got to pump him up with a lot of knowledge now. Jim, is that wrestling sequence? Yeah, I think the significant thing here is how disheartened Biggs looks. We saw him just before this, uh, looking over to his corner. He really looks disheartened now. Well, they're managing to getting him off the stall again anyway. I was wrong about that, I really did think that was the end. Out for the sixth round. Tyrell Biggs now. Such a handicap, isn't it? Scheduled for 15, and uh, as the great Joe Lewis said, you can run, but you can't hide in the fight ring. Biggs has never been subjected to this kind of pressure before either. And there's no way you can cope with it. I would have thought, actually, I would like to think if it had been me in there, my corner would have pulled me out. Yeah, the right hands are getting really punishing as well. What an armory this fella's got. Jim, can we even imagine what he's going to look like in another two or three years if this keeps up? I wonder if Tyson can improve much more than he has done. I don't know if he's really taken his ability as far as it can go. But, uh, I mean, it's certainly good enough. He doesn't really have to improve. He's far too hot for anything around at the moment. That's like a 20th century caveman, the way he's going in there. But, you know, he's got sort of a hidden skill in many ways, Jim, is not he? He does some very smart things as well. Well, you have to remember, he's in with an excellent boxer, Olympic standard, but he hasn't taken too many because he exerts so much much pressure. The other fellow is always on the defensive. So that is part of his skill. But uh, we don't see him taking too many clean punches himself. Oh, 
touch to the body there, and we're so close to the ring, Jim, right now, that, uh, well, I tell you, we gasped as that left hook to the body went in. Right! Let go, let go, let go, let go, sit back. Well, the referee will remember this in his first heavyweight championship fight that he's officiated there. He's really having to work hard. Oh, the end 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 Tyson wants to hang on to him as well. Wait, no punch it, let him out. Let him out, Tell. Let him go, come on, Tell. Well, I'm going to take a point away now. I don't think Biggs has anything else to offer. I think if he survives this round, his corner should pull him out of there. Yeah, I don't think he's going to. I said that in the fifth, mind you, because of the cut, cut eye. Well, he, surprisingly enough, it stood up to it a bit here, the eye. They, they've worked hard on it, but the coagulates have hardened a lot. But so it won't be for that reason, Jim. They, no, I mean, if Biggs was in the fight here, if he had a hope of winning, then uh, leave him in there. But there's absolutely no chance. We're, we're only finding out how much courage he has, how long he can survive. His corner must pull him out of there. Trainer George Benton's a compassionate sort of a guy, and uh, he's done this all himself. I would have thought he'd be one of the first to offer him to get out of there. So the doctor's over there now, having a look at uh, Biggs again. And we really don't need any distractions at this uh, stage of the fight. Conversations inevitably with doctor and referee who are talking to Larry Hazard, the chairman of the New Jersey Commission. Get to the side, play with this guy now. You understand me? This guy's got nothing. Give him the fame, like you did before. Give him the fame. Give him the fame. Step to the side. You're taking the best he's got. So what the hell's wrong with you, Father? Come on, this guy. Well, from that lip reading, Jim, I would have thought that the doctor saying you better watch it in this round to the referee, don't you? Well, I, I don't even think it should be up to the doctor. I think uh, Biggs's corner should be saying, you've done as good as you can do, Terrell. Just, let's just get you out of there. Round seven. Yeah, I agree with you. The, the lad's really uh, put up a, a really good show. I say the lad, he's, he's 26, he's five years older than Tyson. I don't think we're in any doubt who the better man is, and if that's what sport's supposed to be about, then we found out what we wanted to find out. Tyson is just far too hot for him. The thing with Tyson, he holds that good position, and then he's so fast with some of the punches that, uh, well, it catches the people by surprise, including the intended target. See, this is where we should expect a little bit more technique from Tyson. He's demoralised a man, he slowed the pace down to his liking, but uh, he's just gone in doing the same things all the time. He should be showing a little faint and uh, try to draw a lead from Biggs and come back with solid counters, but he's just doing the same things. Eventually, OK, it's going to pay off for him, but this is where he needs a little bit more technique. Yes, he tends to be a little bit repetitive there. Uh, and as I say, although he's... Very much an apprentice champion. He is the undisputed champion in the world. He has to be judged at that level. Straight from the, the start of the injury, it was a bad one. I mean, Tyson should have a little bit more imagination now. I mean, we can see that uh, Biggs is very tired. He, ha he isn't really coming back with any punches that should worry Tyson. So Tyson should be able to open up an opponent better than he's doing. Close in like that with Tyson when an opponent pulls on and he throws a punch and catches him with a forearm occasionally. That must hurt. Oh, what a jab, that one. That's the way to break up the opposition's uh, concentration, and he did it there. And as he hit him with that punch, I think his eyes went into separate orbits there. Right in his own corner, 
Is he going to make an effort to get up? How do you feel, Paul? Okay. He's got to eight, and he's allowing it to go on. The referee, how long? He won't let him off the hook now, so come on, referee. You can dive in when you like now. And he's waved it all over. That's it. Glad to see that in the seventh. Tyrell Biggs was as brave as you could ever expect a challenger to be. But he was totally outpunched. And let's face it, from a fighting point of view, he was outclassed as well at the finish. Yeah. Well, as soon as Tyson gets his chance, it's all over. He never lets anybody off the hook. Uh, I would like to have seen Biggs being pulled out of there. He'd done his best. There's no way he could ever win this contest, but his corner kept sending him up. But once more, a tremendous performance from Tyson, especially when he got his man on the hook. Uh, he didn't waste any punches. Every punch he threw was a, a jawbreaker, and uh, there we have Terrell uh, Biggs. Hopefully, he's sitting up now, so hopefully everything is all right. Just five seconds to go there to the end of that round, actually. Not that it made any difference. Let's have a look, just a look at that replay of the finish now. When he caught him, there it is. The left hook yet again. Totally unbalanced. Lucky not to go right out of the ring there. That's where Muhammad Ali was sitting right behind him. Jim, have a second look from a different angle. He opened him up with the jab, then came up with the left hook he's been looking for all the way through the contest and a cracking punch. Biggs did very well. I think he was wondering himself if he should, if he should stand up or not, but uh, he did the brave thing and stood up. But uh, the finishing punch was a cracker. See there, when he flopped, uh, his head went there, flopped like Wurzel Gummidge on those ropes. See, we're seeing it uh, from all angles, and when Tyrell Big sees this in the replay, I think he'll say, is that really what happened to me? And that was the actual finish. Here's the finish again, Jim. Yeah, well, it was all over the place. It was just a case of the first clean punch that got through, and there it was. It, was, it wasn't even one of his best, but by that time, Biggs' uh, resistance to the punches had gone, and over he went. Uh... Yeah, and the overhead camera again, then we've got, and he's trying to claim a little bit there, anything to get out of trouble. As you say, half a punch by Tyson standards, and the referee was in. And he should have been in a little bit earlier for me, but nonetheless, uh, he was there. The end comes at 2 minutes, 59 seconds of the seventh round. The winner, still the undefeated, undisputed, heavyweight champion of the world, Mike Tyson! Well, he came in sweating, and uh, there it is, just pouring off there, Tyson like a machine when he goes to work. So here's the uh, words Mike from Tyson, Tyson with our colleague, Larry Merchant. A paint job and then sort of wrecked the whole house. Mike, he looked very impressive in the first round, looking like Ali, the way he moved and jammed. What were your thoughts at that point, and then how did you attack him to stop that? Well, in my mind, I knew this was 15 rounds, and I was prepared to put the pressure on constantly for 15 rounds. You know, I was, having, I was having a great time in there. I felt good. I was in the best condition of my life, and I did what I was supposed to do. Well, well, tell me, what, what did you think in that first round when he was moving, trying to do an Ali no, with his left? I knew when I, when I came to this fight, I was the best fighter in the world, and I'm a man alive that can beat me. What broke him down? Was it just constantly the body punches? When I was, I was hitting him with body punches, and I heard him actually, he was crying in there making woman gestures like, oh, 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 I can't How, find him, but I knew that he was breaking down soon. You're saying that Biggs was crying when yes, you hit him? Yes. When, when did that happen? And perhaps the fourth round on. So that you knew you had him by that Absolutely, time? Absolutely, but I knew he was, he was tough and they taking those punches. Was this your most satisfying fight in the sense of the way you went about it patiently and, and business-like, not getting excited, not trying to take him out with one punch? Well, I, I was very calm, and I, was, and I was thinking about Roberto Duran, how he used to cut down the runners and just wear them down. And I had that frame of mind when I was in the ring. All right, Mike, let's take a look at the first knockdown, and would you describe what was happening? Well, I was in there looking for the punch, boom, and I knew it would come. But when he threw a punch, his hand opened a little, and I thought I could slip a punch right in there. Were you trying to work on his cut early on because he was pretty bloody? No, I wasn't even thinking about the cut. I was just hitting to the body. 
softening them up. So that from then on, you really feel that it was inevitable after the first few Absolutely. rounds. Absolutely. All right, Mike, we hear now that you're going to fight Larry Holmes next. Why Larry Holmes? Well, I don't have any say so in the matter. I'll just a fighter and I'll defend my title against any man in the world. If I was you, I'd talk to Jim Jacobs about that. Do you want to fight Larry Holmes? I'll fight any man in the world because I believe there's no one in this clan that can beat me. Okay, then let me ask Jimmy Jacobs, the co-manager of Mike, why do you want to fight Larry Holmes next? Well, the reason is that be uh, I would say that 90% of the world thought that Larry Holmes beat Michael Spinks the last time they fought. In fact, Larry, of 46 newspaper men polled after the fight, 42 men of the 46 voted for Larry Holmes in the last fight with Michael Spinks. Larry is sitting at home feeling that he's the champion, and that's the reason we're going to fight him. But he did lose his last two fights. He hasn't fought in a good long while. It's A lot of people are saying, what is this, some kind of an antique show? Or is this in the best or worst traditions of boxing, fighting these kinds of fights? I don't think it's e either in the worst or best traditions of boxing. Boxing history is replete with 27 heavyweight champions attempting to regain the title. However, this the champion we're talking about, Larry Holmes, uh, was defeated by a split decision in his last fight against Michael Spinks, where everyone, even you, Larry, everyone, including you, thought that Larry Holmes won the fight. Okay, then, then, then what about Michael Spinks? Uh, that is the most attractive fight out there, according to everyone, and you can jump in here too, Bill, Bill Caton. What about Michael Spinks, and, and why aren't you going to take him on next or right after next or whenever? Whenever we're ready to, we make our plans for that. We haven't made our plans to take on Michael Spinks because a fight with Michael Spinks which is a pay-per-view, closed-circuit fight, takes a minimum of five months, during which time Mike would not fight. Mike wants to fight more frequently. So you're saying now you will fight Michael Spinks eventually? I would say this, that Michael Spinks is definitely in our future. Definitely in our future, but not in our immediate future. Let me put it this way. So two very happy men there, Jim Jacobs and Bill Caton, the co-managers of uh, Mike Tyson. It seems a little churlish to say that you're disappointed with the performance. Uh, he wins his fight so easily, but he did get untidy towards the end. I think the referee might have stopped it a little earlier. But you have to recognize the courage of Tyrell Biggs and how unfortunate it was that he sustained that cut again. We're going to take a break and we'll be back with more World Championship Boxing in just a couple of minutes.